Okay, before I put the um, heat kit away, i uh, going to do a little bit of uh, two basics, a little troubleshooting and theory 101, very basic stuff. Think of it as 101 for dummies. Um, nothing deep here, but this is a um, schematic of a triode tube, basic um, triode tube schematic right here um, big blow up of one um, found this on the net and I'm like hey that's a pretty neat picture so I printed it out and it's just the basics of a tube um, a regular trial tube you have the heater which all it does is heat up the cathode right and with most tubes at least glass anyway when the heaters on and working it glows that dull orange there as you can see in these uh, 3500Zs we got it up and running and you see that glow heaters is working so you know any glass tube you turn it on the heaters on it should be glowing like that if if it's glowing you're good if it's not glowing you got a problem and all the heater does is apply heat and I do mean temperature heat to the cathode the cathode is uh, basically the ground and but what happens when you apply heat to certain um, material which the cathode here is made out of which is the um, um, ground part of it here you apply heat to it it starts emitting electrons or if I can simplify it you know it's not an exact thing um, it makes a fire when you apply heat to the electrons you're like burning the coals you got the fire going so it's ready to go you know that fire is trying to go the electrons are popping around ready to go and these um, electrons are negative that fire is ready to go and opposites attract so over here at the top you got the plate or your high voltage um, and you got a big positive over here so these electrons these negatives that are um, you know burning up they ready to go they fired up they trying to get over here to the positive you know be attract attracted to the positive over here but the reason all of them don't jump across and go there is you got your control grid in the middle of it um, and if you think of it as a fire your control grid is like the oxygen opening or the oxygen sensor you know, you got to you the uh, electrons of the fire can't jump across because it ain't getting no oxygen. It, it can't reach it. You got the control grid in the way, and if the control grid ain't open, um, none of these can jump across and make it all the way across there. So they sitting ready to go. We can't go nowhere. The positive is sitting over here, uh, ready to go, but it's not attracting nothing because the control grid is in the way now the control grid is where your drive comes in a uh, little bit of drive you know you open that door you know a little bit of drive you open that door a little bit they jumping across you know like hey we got to open it let's go guys and then you put like full drive on it you know you open that um uh, oxygen or you open that flute you know you open it all the way up with a lot of drive full drive these guys are happy they like hey it's free come on jump across and you got full power jumping across and that's how you have a little bit of power on a tube from the control grid that controls um, the uh, negative jumping off from that heater attracted by the positive now, also how it works is the higher the positive the harder these guys are gonna jump, jump, you know, the harder and faster they're gonna jump, and more of them are gonna jump because they're attracted to that positive. So if you got, you know, a thousand volts, you know, on the tube, they like, okay, let's go. But you got two thousand, three thousand on that same tube, it's gonna really fire up that tube, and you're gonna get more watts. And a lot of people will do that. They'll build a tube. Well, I wouldn't say build it, but they'll run it, you know, full bore open. They'll put uh extra high voltage on the plate they drive it too hard um, some amplifier makers even um heated up the ground too high um dentron was one famous of that uh you know mla 2500 dtr 2000 they would run the heaters too hot so these electrons are ready to go it's too many of them burning up they jump and they ready to go but when you um 
put the control grid and the plate on it and you got it too high these guys are jumping around you're gonna get more power however anything you do that's past that tubes parameter it's going to uh, slowly or fastly kill the tube you know the Dentron MLA 2500 which did that you can get two little 8874s um, basically two 400 watt tubes and you get like 2500 watts out of the thing wouldn't last long though you would eat the tubes in it because the heater was too high and it's just burning the tube up you know all these um, electrons from the cathode just jumping around another thing about a grounded grid amplifier this again is the control grid so on a grounded grid they take this control grid and they ground it so it's no longer controlling that that flow you know going up and down here but what they do um, is they make it so only so many electrons are you know jumping up there you know that fire is ready to go but it's not quite enough where it can jump across you know that grounded control grid now and they apply the drive right into the cathode so this cathode potential where that fire is going up and down with your drive and as it goes up more um, of those um, electrons or that fire is jumping across to the plate and as it go down less so you get uh, you know a full signal out when you have a uh, grounded grid um, electron um, phew, tube getting tongue-tied here um, but you have a grounded grid that's how it works you put the drive in on the cathode you ground the grid there one of the things about a grounded grid though is it takes more drive to do that and that's why you'll see a lot of um, grounded grid amplifiers it takes a hundred watts or so on a big tube to drive them or even a sweep tube that's ran in grounded grid that's why they have driver tubes on them CB amplifiers to take the watts um, that full watt coming in and you have a driver tube that have put about 20 watts per tube out um, into the uh, final tubes because it's grounded grid and it needs more watts um, to drive it than 4 watts. Control grid, if you run it um, a trial with the control grid, it takes less watts to drive it. However, the control grid is high impedance. So you got to have an input tuning of some type on a control grid to get your drive watts to match to go into the control grid. So it's a little more complicated um, to make a control grid um, amplifier, a regular trial, and it's easier to just ground that grid and uh, make it a grounded grid. You have to use less matching and, and less stuff. And then I talk about turbo all the time with this uh, tetrode amplifier with a screen grid. It's much more complicated, and we're not going to do that one uh, today. This is basic um, stuff. Um, the plate is actually that thing you see on the outside uh, the tubes basically run from the inside out with the heater and the uh, cathode then the grid and then the plate um, a lot of them are set up like Christmas trees inside and if you ever turn a Christmas tree sideways or upside down um, it's not right they don't have enough support so many tubes including the 3500Zs here uh, most of them are built so they only you only run them vertical uh, standing up like that if you run them sideways on a tube that's not made for it, that Christmas tree inside of there um, doesn't have enough support and sometimes them grids will fall over and hit something and shut out and you got a catastrophe uh, going on um, one more thing um, usually RF tubes you're going to see the plate at the top, a plate cap at the top. Uh, most audio tubes, the plate is going to come out of pin at the bottom. Um, the reason for that is RF uh, likes to radiate. It, it, it's you know trying to radiate all over the place. And hence, if you take that RF coming out the plate and you run it back down through the tube and to a pin over there, like this tube here if we ran that RF instead of out the plate at the top and down here through the pins at the bottom when you're radiating 
that RF likes to um, radiate and jump over to the heaters and to the cathode and to the control grid because it's coming out the same pins, you know, out the bottom near them, whereas it's coming out the top, um, it's away from them, so you're getting less feedback and less radiation from the RF. So usually, uh, RF tubes I had to plate at the top, audio tubes you had to plate at the bottom, and that's the major difference between um, RF tubes and audio tubes with that. Some people might disagree with me on that, but in my opinion, that's a fact. Um, but the reason I fired up this um, HL2200, I wanted to do one more thing and talk about people who mistune their amplifier. I get people all the time. I tune mine down. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't tune mine all the way up. Uh, I tune mine down. I take care of mine. I, and I said it again, never ever uh, mistune an amplifier. You always tune it for max watts. Unless you have a drive like that, which is just basically a variable voltage uh, that uh, affects the drive. Sure, you can turn that up and down. But the tune and load, and over here, the uh, tune and load, always tune those for maximum. Because, let me warm, no, that one's warmed up. Let me get this one warmed up. And, uh, gonna show what happens when you mistune an amplifier. I detune this one. Mistune it. And by the way, uh, when you turn the amp on, you got the volts. That means my power supply is probably good and I don't have a major short in the tubes. I'm gonna key it down with no drive right quick. See my plate current go up a little bit. Um, that again means the power supply is working good, uh, no short, the tubes are conducting a little bit uh, with no drive. Again, uh, just key down. I'm grounding the uh, the cathode here when I hit, hit my switch and the relay comes in and some of the electrodes uh, make it, some of that fire make it to the top and that's how you see a little bit of plate current when it key down. That's normal. That's what we're supposed to get. And when you hit drive, I ought to be warmed enough now. I'm going to key down the drive. There I go, full plate current. That means I'm getting drive. Oh, actually, I'm going to lock that down. I'm getting drive. My power's good. My high voltage is good. No shorts and all that. And if I'm not getting output at this point, it means there's something on the output side. You know, my drive is good. My power supply is good. It can only be from the top of the tube output to the tank circuit, then the relay and out to the antenna. It's got to be something uh, in that area. If you got drive, you got voltage, but you got no output. But anyway, I got this thing detuned or mistuned right now. And how many watts the tubes are doing or eating right now is the plate voltage. I'm getting a lot of glare with my camera because I got the lights down. Plate voltage is at 2,000 volts. And I'm running about a little over half an amp. So 2,000 times 0.5 is 1,000 watts. Since none of my watts are going out, I got it detuned to almost zero. These tubes are eating the watts. I say that all the time. You see them turning red like that? These tubes are eating every single watt that is going up there from the uh, cathode to the plate because they're not going out. So the tubes are literally eating those watts or, or they catching that fire every single watt because you just detune that amplifier. Now if I tuned it up right, which I'm not going to do, that glow would go away and my plate current would dip it would go down because what's happening is instead of those watts uh, being eight by the tubes and the current eight by the tubes they're going out like they're supposed to go now mind you even the best amplifiers only about 60 percent at most of the watts are going to go out so the tubes are always going to eat um, um, around half the watts that go out that's the efficiency um, and 60% efficiency is max that you can get on a perfect amplifier, but most run around 55%. But anyway, you want all the watts to go out. 
and every watt that's going out is a watt that the tube is not eating. You don't want to uh, mistune as again that amplifier will eat those watts and you're going to kill the tubes eventually. Okay, that's about all I wanted to say on this one. Be safe out there. Bye.